when we pray there's a God who hears us yeah. when we pray there's a God to answer yeah. when we pray we prevail we prosper Um, praise the Lord. Yes. So this um, message is from Russia. One of our viewers from Russia. The person is not here, but the person is connected online. Yes. Um, and she's asking, she has always had that. Sorry, he is asking, I have always had attention from women. So how do I know it's my season? Thank you so much. By virtue of your looks as a guy, if you've not lost your beauty, your looks, your handsomeness, you will always have ladies admiring you. But it is critical to know the difference between admiration and the season for connection. I think that is one thing nobody may have taught him. So the fact that there's constant admiration will not make him to know the season for connection. There will always be admiration for as long as you look good. But here's the point. You can always know the season for marriage when number one, you know that you already have what you are doing. You have a means of income. You know that already on the inside of you, you are beginning to desire to be with someone. Once the desire to settle with someone comes in, that is the season when you should begin to talk about settling down. During that season, when you already have a means of income, you have a desire to settle down, and there are people around you during that season, you can now carefully and prayerfully say, God, of all the people around me now, or perhaps the ones who have come before, or maybe the ones to come, who would you want me to settle with? So first, there will be heightened desire to settle down. It must be matched with an available means of income, meaning he must be profitably employed. Yeah. Okay. Um, she's asking, she's dating a Muslim guy at the moment. Uh -huh. um, from the whole story, it looks like this guy doesn't have something doing, and he's a dropout, and um, he does not believe in God. He doesn't go to church. He doesn't go to mocks either. Um, is it your question? Calm down. <laughs> and um, now there's this Christian guy coming. The guy believes in God. He's a footballer playing for another country currently. And um, he's doing quite well. So the problem now for her is um, the guy is four years younger than her. And um, he's not her spec. She's taller than him. And he's not a handsome at all. Um, so basically, that's the question. And she's 27 years. So what's the other? All right. So here we have a very serious situation. First of all, um, um, since you're watching this broadcast, please let me say this. Um, the Bible is very clear about your relationship with an unbelieving person. God is clear about that. Your feeling doesn't matter. The Bible makes us know clearly as a child of God, you cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That You cannot. You cannot. So, Keep emotions aside, whether it's a Muslim, is nice, is loving, is caring, and all of that. That he's good doesn't mean he's God's. Don't mistake the fact that something is good and assume that that is God's. If it is God, it will be good. It can be good and it will not be God's. So please do not mistake that at all. So first, the issue of the Muslim, outrightly out of it. Um, if the Muslim is a great person. But it would be better for a Muslim to marry a fellow Muslim like himself so that we don't have conflict of religion. He's a nice guy. Let him marry somebody that will be of the same faith with him, that will relate with him. Number two, as touching, as, the, as touching the guy you want to marry, you say is reaching out to you now. The footballer is younger than you are. Your mind can't handle it. He's shorter than you are. Your mind can't handle it. Uh, what else? It's not as handsome as you want. It's very obvious that your mind can't receive him. Please, none of them is the answer. It's time to now keep yourself before the Lord and I'm sure God will bring the right person. It's very obvious you have not yet met the person you are to marry. If you will give God time, I'm sure that God will bring the right person to you in Jesus' mighty name. Since you, your heart can't receive the short guy, your heart can't receive the fact that he's four years older than you do, 
nobody's going to force him on you. Otherwise, you're not going to be satisfied and comfortable in such a relationship. So, the best option you have right now is to wait. Um, okay, Papa, this is quite interesting. She is online here on yes. Zoom. And she's saying that she's dating a guy and she calls him pet name, but he doesn't like it. So she asked him, what do you want me to call you? He said, till we get married. So she insisted and he said, okay, I want you to call me my Lord. And he said, I would like you to submit to me the way Mama Oye, Mama Mary Oye submits to Papa and calls him Papa, my Lord. So, um... Where's so, Mama Oye? Please go and bring Mama Oye. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So her question is, she's scared because she thinks that if she gets married to this guy, the guy will treat her like a slave. First of all, uh, tell the guy that for lack of words, he is not correct. Mama Oye doesn't call me Papa. Uh, Mama Oye doesn't call me my Lord. It's a shock you to know that instead of Lord, Mama Oye calls me baby. So I am a baby. So I guess maybe there's maybe another Mama Oye. Is there our own Oye or Oye Kong? She put Mary, Mary Oye. Mary Oye. Yes. Maybe Oye Kong or something. Not, uh, so our own Mary Oye doesn't call me Papa. She doesn't call me uh, my Lord. My wife calls me baby. Mm, baby. So And I say, yes, baby. So... Uh, <laughs> so it's not my marriage you are talking about and by the grace of God I don't lord over my wife I, I didn't tell my wife what to call me and by the grace of God let me say this to you rather than lord over my wife I allow my wife to find expression in the marriage uh, it's dangerous that you are not yet married and you are seeking lordship um, I am really worried for you sir and I'm not sure that I am the one that is pastoring you. Uh, and if you are a member of this church, I guess you come to the church, but I think it's somebody else. There's another pastor you are studying. I guess maybe the lady in question is a member of our church, and you are trying to use me to bring her under subjection based on the philosophy that guides you. If you have followed me very well, you know I'm not a pastor that teaches men to lord over their wives. I'm a person that teaches you to allow your wife find expression and I've lived it before you. So, Lordship, you didn't learn that from me. Um, thank you, Papa. Um, Papa, what do you do when you are in a relationship with a man who is constantly demanding things from you, like money and cooking for him, uh -uh. without even providing the resources? He constantly initiates conversations that revolves around his demands, like buying things for him without reciprocating. If you don't comply, he puts up an attitude. Additionally, he wants to always be involved. He, he wants you to always be involved in his business, but never takes your advice or come back to discuss things further. The only time he talks to you about his business is when he says things are slow and money is not coming in frequently, which I feel he is indirectly asking me for money. He hardly wants to talk about my own business, my own work, or engage in more productive conversations. What do I do? Sorry. I wish I'm talking to you directly. She's, the person is online here. She's online? Yes. It was okay. sent from... I, I, wish, I wish I could get her on Zoom. I would have loved to have a conversation with her online. Um, but since I can get her online, that's okay. Let me say this to you. The first proof that you are with a man, the first proof that you are with a man is that you'll be restraining him from giving. You'll be the one saying, stop, you are giving too much. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Because God created man in whose image? In his own likeness. For God so loved that he what? Gave. The proof of love is what? 
So, sisters, I don't know why you are in this kind of situation. You hear it in church and you still run into the same problem. The proof of love is what? Husbands, do what? Love your wife. Is that not what the Bible says? As Christ did what? Love the church and what? Gave. For God so loved that God did what? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and so the proof of love is what? Taking, receiving, is that what love is all about? The first way you know you've met a man that is your husband is that in the, bed, in the little, no matter how small, you will see a commitment. Give, he may not have money to give, he will give you encouragement. He may not have uh, money to give. He will give you support. There's something you will use to know a man when he steps into your life. He will give you encouragement, give you support. Give, he will give you even, he will give you some kind of, uh, uh, you know, for those of us that have low self-esteem, he will give you validations, affirmation. You look beautiful. There is something about a real man he gives. Am I talking to somebody here? And please, something is fundamentally wrong with you as a lady when you just meet a guy and you are in relation with the guy, you are the one giving, giving. You have a need to be needed. Something is wrong with you as a lady. You just met a guy, you are in relation with a guy, you are giving him money, you give him this, you give him sex, you give him money, you give him time, you give him everything, you support his business and you are saying to yourself, he's not supporting me, he's not giving to me. So you see all of that and you just keep giving. You have reversed the order of marriage. You have reversed the order of relationship. In relationship, the man is called to love. The woman is called to submit. Is that okay? And in loving, the proof of a man's love is measured by how he what? It's as simple as that, man. The proof of love is that a man should be able to give. If there's anybody with a life question, raise your hand. They will give you an opportunity to ask your life question. Um, yes have a life question you can come here yeah if you have a life question i just want the first five of you to come to come close first five to quickly come first five please come this way um so why you are come you're filing out um, papa let me quickly answer this yes. because this question is i'm getting this question um you know more than four times now parents not giving their consent yes. now this lady is saying she has investigated purpose is aligning his um, her par no, his parents want her, but her parents are saying no. And I have that similar question replicated more than thrice. Okay, please, if you have an issue whereby you have prayed, you are very confident, you know that this is God, you've investigated, you've done everything that we normally teach you here, and you are very certain uh, that this is the person that God wants you to settle with, and your parents, one of the parents, uh, are not in alignment with it. They are not in agreement. Here's the first thing I want you to do. You want to get to know why is your mother saying no? Why is your father saying no? Is that okay? If the reason why they are saying no is irrelevant, it's not something very important, then at that moment, you want to engage in prayer. Number two, you want to engage senior family members or pastors to your parents who your parents respect you want to engage them and talk to them and share your concerns with them all right so that they can now mediate between you and your parents so number one you want to know the reason why your parents are saying no for instance if your parents are telling you that the reason why they don't want you to get married is that they said um the man is from another tribe. You, you are from another tribe. The man is African. You are European and all those kind of stuff. Uh, then you know that it's a matter of tradition. Okay? Your parents are concerned. Don't discountenance their concerns. They've never seen anybody marry like that before. So they are uncertain of what your, of what your future can be like. You are convinced. They need to be given the same conviction you have. It will take time. You will have to market your convictions to them so that over time they can begin to see that their son their daughter is not going in the wrong direction so it depends on the reason why your parents are saying no 
Some of the reasons are just purely, I mean, just absolutely useless and unnecessary, just out of fear, out of unnecessary concerns. Those ones requires clarification. Some are spiritual. Your parents can say they prayed and God told them you are not, the person is not the one. But you heard God and men of God have told you that that's the right person. It will take time. You will have to pray again. Go back to God. Be sure. Once again, God gives you the go ahead. Give time and ask God to convince your parents. And God over time will do it. Is that okay? So I would challenge that. It is based on the situation uh, responsible for the disagreement. Only to that extent will we decide what exactly we need to do. So for now, I will say that if you know what the reason is why your parents are saying two of you cannot be married together, if you can reach out to us, we'll be able to counsel you in the most appropriate way so that you can take the right steps. Thank you. Yes, sir. What's your question? Okay. Good day, everyone. Yes, sir. my first time here today. It's my first time here today. Um, I enjoy it so much. Now, my first question is... C can we have a sound on this mic, please? Yes. Okay. I say it's my first time here. My name is Moses Bright. and make him. It's my first time here. What do you do? I, I'm actually a student, but I do... I'm actually a borehole driller. I drill borehole. Really? I contract borehole drilling. Yes, sir. You know how to drill borehole very well? Yes, sir. If I give you a job, you can do one for me. Very well, sir. All right. See me after the program. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. My first question is, what is the difference between dating and courtship? Now, the second question is, is courtship required in marriage? Or before marriage. Now, the main question that brings me down to this point is if, um, if I quote wrongly, I stand to be corrected. From where you were preaching, you made mention of ladies go to their um, spouse house before marriage, like they go to their spouse house, they, they come out, you know. Being all free when they are not married and going, spending time in their... Now, if I understand what courtship is particularly or correctly, I think in courtship, both parties need to spend time together, getting to know each other and understand each other better, right? Getting to know each other and understand each other better, spend quality time, meet friends, to know their background and just like from what your teaching is all about. Now, how do we get to know each other better when we just meet in offices? <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's my question. So yeah. how do we get to know each other better, better when the meeting is in offices? Yes, in offices. In maybe, restaurants. Maybe in restaurants. Millennium Park. Fine, maybe not like visiting the family, like the parents, the girl's family, or you visiting. So, where is the best place to know each other? No, I'm asking. We are all learning here. I'm just asking because I know in our society today, just like we all know, if everybody should say yes to it, we the, most of the ladies go to the guys' houses, maybe spend a day or two, just to, you know, spend time to understand. One another. It's just like in business or in relationship between two guys. If you don't have um, 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 any money dealings, you will not get to know if this person is trusted or what this person can do or what this person cannot do. That's what I mean by that. Thank you so much. Very powerful question. Can we appreciate him, please? So the, the summary of this whole thing, everything you're asking is around courtship. And the first thing was to distinguish between courtship and dating. Is that okay? Dating is an open-ended relationship with nothing in view. Dating is me and you just hanging around to figure out if we will have anything to do with each other. So it's an open-ended relationship. In most cases, dating leads nowhere. Okay? That's a first date, second date, and then you now jump to another person again. First date, second date, and third date. So in the scripture the Bible doesn't so much encourage dating. It's, a, it's an open-ended relationship that always leaves wounds in the heart of people. 
Okay? Um, so, but the world, don't forget the church, the way the church gets married is different from the way the world gets married. So, if we do not understand that, we're going to be judging the way the church does things by the way the world does things. Okay? So, in the kingdom, the first thing we do is not just to start dating. Even though dating as a secular culture has started penetrating the church culture now, you have a situation whereby pastors actually encourage members to go for dating. Is that okay? Yeah, so, and, and, and so it leaves the church with too many broken people because just last week, people saw you going out with her. Is that okay? And then, just always thinking that something is happening with the two of you. You have dropped her, you are picking on the other one too, and you go out. Then your friends will ask you, why we saw you with the other girl? Why did you stop? No man, that girl, she just appeared to be. So you find rumors spreading around church. And now you have to damage her because you are not of interest. She's not of interest to you. Is that okay? Meanwhile, that same lady with her flaws will actually be a good person for somebody else. But for the way you have damaged her, somebody else who she may have been good for will not want to take her. You see that? I'm telling you what has happened here in the church here. We had a case of a young man who wanted to marry a lady in our church here. Two amazing people, very close to me. The guy wanted to marry the lady. I called the lady and I told her, I said, look, this guy is interested in you. And the guy went to meet with her with permission and all the structure we have in place here. The guy went to meet this girl and said, oh, you know, I want, I want to marry you. And the girl initially was excited. But her friend, her friend who had had a relationship with the guy before, went and told her and said, oh, that guy, his own is this and that and all of that. She, she said all kinds of stuff about the guy. And not that they are bad stuff, that the guy is not somebody who just makes up his mind. She says some things, you know, in a way to weaken this lady. So the lady left the guy because of what a friend that knows her, that knows this person before, said. Anyway, longer short of it now, the guy is married. He's in Canada now. Shortly after that, he got married to somebody in Canada. They have their second child now. And as God will have it, God showed her mercy too. She just got married to somebody there in America together so what i'm saying is that you can have consequences as a result of allowing datings in church uh, and then you're going to kiss too many frogs in the name of looking for a prince okay so in the church our culture in the kingdom of god is different from the secular in the kingdom of god we don't just jump around and meet girls we take our time to wait for god to give us the leading to give us the direction we in all our ways we acknowledge god first we say lord who do you want me to go for do you understand that's why i said be sensitive to make the right move at the right time when god is leading do you understand so we wait like you now as a good boy who driller from look at you look so smart i mean so nice and you're making a lot of money from because ball has become very expensive now so I know you're making a lot of money shows, you know. So the next thing you're going to do now is that God, among all these precious girls here, like which one is the one? Do you understand what I'm saying now? Then God will, like, you'll just be hearing Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. <laughs> or you have a vision. Or you have a desire towards a particular lady. At that moment, you meet your pastor in the church and say, sir, I feel a leading to us. In our church, this man is in charge. You go to him so that he can help guide you. Say, I'm interested in a particular girl in our church. He will then get to help you structure the approach on how to reach out to that girl. Because you may be interested in someone that's already engaged to somebody else. All right? So once you see the lady, what we'll do is that there is what to call a preliminary, what you call dating in a courtship relationship. Whereby the first thing is for two of you to meet and you discuss about your values, your plans, your desires, your dreams, and all of the, your personality. Those are the preliminaries, which is what you do in dating. But unlike in dating where we're just going out, we're just going out with nothing in view. In courtship, we have marriage in view. We want to be sure that we are the right persons for each other. So in those preliminary phases where we're getting to know each other about our values, our desires, and all of that, if we now begin to notice that we're having a lot of conflicts, we then get back to the drawing board and say, look, sorry, I, th I thought this is the person I would like to marry, and I really wanted to marry a person, but we're having irreconcilable differences in the area of this and this and that. If the counselor cannot help in that situation, they've tried and it doesn't work, two of you can go separate ways. 
Is that okay? Does that answer your question, sir? Fantastic. So in the kingdom of God, we have a different approach to doing these things. And in terms of talking about uh, how can we get to know each other, we don't have to know each other in my bedroom. Understand that, sir? We don't have to know each other by coming to spend time with me. Is that all right? We can get to know each other through several. We can go to play football together. We get to know some things with each other while we're playing. We can go for lunch together. We can go for dinner together. We can go to friends' birthdays together. We can have private times apart where we just go to a private place, a public place where we can have private meetings. All right? What we are saying is let's be careful as Christians not to engage in private meetings that will lead to spiritual compromises and ultimately we don't end up marrying each other and we have too many unnecessary memory about each other is that okay god bless you sir thank you thank you so much eh? um sir please before you quickly take hers um someone is asking here how will she know that a man is good for her sexually because she has a very strong sexual urge and can last long without to go without to go through sexual intercourse with the opposite sex okay this is becoming gynecological all right let me say this if you are a lady you have high sex drive very simple you have high sex drive and uh, your sex drive can be such that it lasts for a long time they say you have high libido and all of that your hormones your sex drive is very high because of your the nature of your hormones is there any medical doctor here can you put up the mic before you give it to them put up the mic any medical doctor here are you a doctor huh are you a doctor okay i thought she was a medical doctor so one of the things that i want to quickly say here about high sex drive is that you are not going to use testing him before you get married madam how much sex will you need to have to confirm that I can meet your sex drive? Your sex drive is your sex drive. Is that okay? Even when you get married to the man, no matter how great his sex drive is, because you have an extremely high sex drive, it is not sexual intercourse with him that is going to ultimately meet your sex drive. Is that okay? It is a man helping you to reach orgasm. It is a man helping you to reach orgasm in multiple times without even trusting into you. All right? When the man helps you to reach orgasm multiply, you, you, in fact, you need to reach your orgasm multiply before the man even comes in. Because no matter how good the man is, the man has his elastic limit. A woman can have consistent orgasm for a long time, but the man does not ejaculate for a long time. So in which case, in order to meet your sexual drive, whether he has high sex drive or low sex drive, there are ways by which the man can meet your sex, help you achieve your sex drive, not necessarily through having direct sexual penetration with you. Otherwise, you're just going to kill the man. So madam, what I just want to say to you is that if your sex drive is very high, you're going to train your man when you get married on how to help you reach sexual satisfaction. The reality of the matter is that the man may not be able to be to do that for you um, without helping you to achieve that. So what most women will do is to have the man, you are mature people here. So what most women will do is to have the man stimulate your, your clitoris, your G-spots, your labias and the rest of that. He helps you to do all of that. So you come into multiple orgasms severally. Once you reach that multiple orgasm, at that period where you know you've been satisfied, you can tell the man to come in. That's when you get married. For now, everything you had, delete. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Yes. My name is Passion. So, so my, my question is, how do you deal with a man that finds it very difficult to let go of things or forgive easily? Maybe um, you have an issue now, and if you don't persistently talk about it, he can linger it for like a day or two. And how I was raised, my parents, I don't see, they fight now before the dawn of the next day. They already said to So I don't know how. Um, you, you are dealing with a very complicated situation for now. And you need to resolve this before you move forward. Do you understand that? Because it's not how you were raised. It might become an issue for you. You may not be able to exist in that kind of toxic environment. And what you're seeing now will only get worse. 
it will only get worse when you get married. Is that okay? So I will encourage that you deal with that issue now. All right? He needs to know that you don't like it and he needs to make commitment to improving on his conflict resolution style. He has to commit to making sure he improves on his conflict resolution style. You have, to, you have to let him know you don't like it and you have to let him know that if you do something, you've done that and he still remains what he is and you don't like it it hurts you all right so you have to, you have a tough decision to make um because it's about your future now imagine yourself in in a marriage where you wake up every day you sleep together you wake up every day and this is what you see can you survive there mentally are you going to be okay there emotionally are you going to be okay there all right so if you can't resolve this we may end up dissolving the relationship Thank you, sir. god bless you i see a smile on your face yes this looks like a, a what uniform is <laughs> god bless you yeah what's the question good afternoon sir good afternoon everybody yeah um sorry kind of being nervous because my oh, question come, come, is please. come 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 uh, relax this is not mount sinai <laughs> this, is a, this is a church of god so what's your question okay i actually wanted to know if because of growing up as a child, yeah. the only love I've experienced is fatherly love. Okay. And growing up, my dad would always tell you, don't ask anything from any man outside there. Right. Whatever you want, ask me. Because I never grew up with my mom. She left when I was just three months old. I'm sorry. And my father was just the mother. He would ask you, have you bought pad? Have you done this? Have you done that? And eventually he died. So I wanted to ask a question. Is that the reason why... Um, because if I get to understand that married men actually comes more closer to me yeah. and they are more in love with me and they want to do everything for right. you, show you care, rent apartments for you, do this and do that. And most of the young guys that come, right. I find myself being the one, I, I feel is a natural character because my father was always giving, so I, I love giving. Right. So if you come, I want to support you. I want to help you. I can't count how many I've done that for. And at the end of the day, they are nowhere to be found. So I want to ask, is it because of um, fatherly love? That's the reason why I see attention more in men and the rest. And another question is, I wanted to ask, because you talked about season. Yeah. Would I say I have missed my season of marriage? Because I remember a certain time that a guy came down from London to get married to me he was not the one that saw me directly his elder brother's wife saw me in church and she said she likes me and when they sent my picture this and that but the reason why i dissolved the relationship was because of one day i told him that i just finished from fast and he said eh, he's in nigeria that they used to carry church in the head over here there is nothing like witches and wizards so if you know that you want to come here you have to behave like people in this place and this one that even when pastor is preaching he's checking on time to go to make money and he said, if I want to pack my things and come there, I will have to behave like the people there. If not, he will get married to me and stay with me. Uh, three months interval or six months interval. But I was not the one that saw him. The, when the woman explained to me, she said she was not supposed to come to church because she was sick. But the sister actually forced her to come. And she entered when they were sharing the grace. And when she entered, I was the first person she saw. And when they sent my picture to the guy, amongst every other picture, I was the only one he chose. So would I say I've missed my chance? And lastly, and lastly, sorry, and lastly, most guys say I'm not romantic. And they say I'm too busy. That I'm business cautious. I am money cautious. <laughs> So, because of that reason, I, I, I don't know if most of them are actually running away from me because of, they say, I don't really give them that much attention. I told them that you don't know where I'm coming from. You don't know what I've suffered. You don't know what I've been through. So, let's deal with something right now. You're a workaholic. Do you get me now? You are, you do a lot. And I understand it's because you were not raised with the affectionate side of life. You didn't have a mother figure. 
So you were raised by more of a doing person, which is a father. Do you understand what I'm saying? The absence of a mother really, really has a negative impact on us. Do you understand that? Um, you need to slow down because gradually now you are started using walk to cover up. Sorry, sir. Yes. I want to chip in something. Go ahead. Um, I've seen my mom. I know her. Yes. But my mom lived a reckless life. Mm -hmm. We did not grow up together, but yes. I've seen her. And my uncles, they refused to help me because my uncle told me that he cannot invest into me because he's not sure if his investments will yield profit or not. So, and because of that, I made a vow not to be like her. And because of that, I slept on the streets. I left my uncle because they almost killed me, being working for them and the rest. And I have this passion for young ladies because I'm a network marketer. And I, I know so many young ladies, young girls, 16, 17, that I have accommodated because of why one, her stepdad almost slept with her. I practically went to their house, packed her things, and gave her an accommodation. Now she's in Ghana building her business. So I have this passion for young ladies because of, I've been through so much. And I believe that if a guy is coming, at least he should understand where I'm coming from. Th that's the point. So that's what we're saying here. So pretty much your life now, you do a lot. Is that okay? That's why when people see you, they don't see the romantic side of you. They see more of the business, business. Am I making a point here? People see more of this girl is a goal getter, right? So the first thing that will do to most guys is that to make them to be afraid that this girl may not be a lovely, lively, and it's a wrong judgment. Because most of the things you are doing, you are using it to cover up what you truly desire. Won't you want to be loved? How will it feel, feel like if you have a guy that just calls you and texts you and tells you how much he loves you? And... Just look at the smile from your face. Can, can you see how much that is lacking in your life right now? Do you understand that? So you need that softer side of life. I understand you had to become an independent girl. Do you understand that? Because nobody was there for you. That's what we're talking about. Nobody was there, so you have to fight. Is that okay? The challenge with that is that once you become too much of a human doing and less of a human being, when people see you, they just want to assume this girl is a tough girl. If I some people are going to call you Margaret Thatcher, they don't know you. So people are going to judge you from outside and think that you are not a romantic, you are not a playful person and all of that, that your life is all about serious, it's all about money, 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 money. Whereas deep on the inside of you, if they get closer, they will realize that you are a loving person. You are somebody who is even looking for love. To be cuddled, to be cared for, somebody to come and celebrate your birthday. How is it going to look like a guy shows up with cake on your birthday? So that's what you need. That's what you need. Is that okay? Now, what I want to say to you is, when you are at a business place, be a lioness. When you are with people, be a lamb. If you are not careful, you'll be carrying your lioness nature at work into relationship with people. When you are with people, enjoy people. Don't be serious like here now relax how are you don't appear and, and you know can anybody can anybody tell me the difference between this look and her smiling face which one is the best one no but we didn't know you had this set of teeth my friend didn't you like it when you saw you felt led inside you so let that smile inside of you. Listen, God has helped you. You are no longer the broke girl you used to be. You are no longer the girl struggling for where to live. Those days are over in your life. Do you understand? 
you are out of the wood. Be careful lest you continue as if life is the way it used to be. Start finding time to interact, find, find time to relax, find time to play with people. Is that okay? And trust me, the married men who are coming, you talked about married men who are coming, you understand that? When married men begin to see a lady appearing to look so matured, married men are more drawn to ladies who are looking very responsible. There's something about married men. The moment you start looking too responsible, too serious, there are some things that draws married men to single ladies. Okay? And then you find out that those who are supposed to be drawn to you, the younger guys, because of the same way, the same thing, the same toughness that you used to appear, that scares them away, it attracts you to the older ones. Are you getting the whole stuff now? So you need to make sure, please, uh, outside of work, try to tone down. And then, by the way, learn to be in meetings where people of your age are present. Your network marketing may be exposing you too much to married people. What kind of network do you do? What kind of business do you do now? Um, it's a network marketing I deal on health and nutritional aspects. So, so that's what you do currently? Does that take you to people who are, does that make you to market a lot to married people? Yes, it does. And I actually have a passion for it. Because my father died for, of stroke. For the business, right? Yes. Your father died of stroke. Yes. So, and I've been able to help people with stroke through my company. And most of them are? Yeah. Can you see where the problem is? Your business keeps you so much in the midst of married people. And you are single. Many of these married men you are caring for have wives that don't care for them. Why shouldn't he approach you? So can you see that the pool you are operating in is deciding who is being attracted to you? So when you finish your work among married men, so don't be surprised that married men are coming. Expect it. Just know that you have nothing to do with them. But what you now need to do is to get in your church, hmm, singles meeting, start going for singles meeting. Join a department in your church where young people are present. Intentionally relate with young people in your church. Intentionally. Because your work keeps you in the midst of married people. Does that make sense now? Does that make sense? Can you see where married people are coming from? Now where you they work? You don't want them to have stroke. So now they are not having stroke. They want to have you. <laughs> Is that all right? So have you learned a few things here? You need to tone down a bit. Intentionally begin to relate with people of your age. Uh, people of young people generally. But that is sorry. Most of these young men, when they come, sorry, but most of them, when they come, the first thing because of most of them, my level of exposure and the distance, when they come, the first thing they want to do is they want to ask you for sex, they want to do this one. Immediately, they want to, like one in my area, he's like, uh, you're a two-work colleague, uh, I need to come to your house, you need to come to I say, come to do what? Like the next day, they send you a message. Uh, I love you. I want to do this well. What When I see it, it's like... Can I, can I say this to you? Um, if you live in the River Rhine area, what kind of... What, what source of protein do you see? If you live in the north where there's no river, what kind of protein do you see more? Protein, protein source come from what? Cow, cattle. cattle. Where you hang around always influences who you see. So if you have a lot of irresponsible guys, you notice around you the people that are coming to you, you are better than all of them. You are in an average community. If the community where you find yourself, the guys, everybody around there, you are better than all of them. Madam, you are, you are, that's not a community for you. Change. Number two, start deliberately interacting with a community of highly intellectual people. 
or more spiritual people and intellectual people. Do you understand that? So where you hang around decides who sees you. Uh, where you that's why you are meeting all those people. Come, come to my house. Come and sleep with me. <laughs> um, and your level of intellect is above them. That shows the kind of environment you find yourself in. There's a community you go to, you'll be struggling to catch up with them. Yeah. God bless you. Did I answer the last one? Ma? Did I answer the last one? Which one is it? Did I miss my time? Or oh, did you miss your time? By no, I thought they even helped you answer the question. I did not help you. Sorry, ma. You mean the one that was asking the guy that was asking you all those that funny guy? You didn't waste your time. You, so it's not a case of missing your time. You will have wasted your time. Your husband has not come. He's about coming. It's after this meeting now. Your husband will come. <laughs> eh? Somebody's watching you now. I will soon, you will see something. Eh? Somebody will soon, hello, hello, my, hello, my. And any funny person that comes, just give me an, I will shoot, shoot the person. All right, so very reasonable person is coming, highly responsible person. Is that okay? But not the one you missed. Uh, not that one. That's not your husband. So you didn't miss time. You'll have wasted time. You saved time. <laughs> God bless you. Yes. I don't know if it's afternoon. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. My name is Wadzanai. I'm from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And it's my first time I came here on Sunday last week, but I didn't get up when you say it's new people uh -oh. because of time. Um, when I saw the program on the screen, I told my friends that invited me, Tiana. Where are your that, friends? There she is. Are you from Zimbabwe too? No, she's from here. You're from Nigeria? Yeah. And you built a bridge across to Zimbabwe? <laughs> oh, thank you. Such a nice person. And by the way, God gave me a prophecy for Zimbabwe recently. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, Zimbabwe is going to rise again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So talk to me about this. <laughs> okay, so I saw the program on the screen and right. I told her that I wanted to attend. Okay. And I kept on telling her we should attend. So I'm here. Uh, when you said questions, I, I hesitated, but I said, I think I need to speak it out because I normally say to her most times, Okay, I grew up in a family with a mother and a father. I believe it was a loving family, but my dad didn't show us that love as his kids. You love the neighbor's children, but the affection that you're supposed to give to us, he never used to give it to us. But growing up now in dating, I'm, all the guys I meet in my life, they are like my father. Nobody shows me that love or affection. A guy comes into my life, can leave me in a week, or can show interest and leave in a day, or show interest and leave in a month. Nobody lasts for a, for a long time. Nobody has ever asked me for marriage in my life. I don't even, I always ask people, how, do, how, how does it happen? Like, how, do, how does it feel? Like, how exactly does a person, when he's, about to propose or you're dating how does it go how do you know and they will say you always know but i don't know <laughs> so i don't know if i'm cursed or what it feels like a curse at the end of the day what's happening to me i'm 38 and truly nobody comes my way nobody even stops me on the road do you think um today um you know one of the things that i want to do is I really wanted us to go the way of deliverance today. Uh -uh. Our time is gone. Listen, can we do so calm down? If we start, we won't finish it. And, and I have two services tomorrow. There's something we can do. Uh, I'm not sure what my schedule is next Saturday. So I would not want to even try that. But... I'm going to speak with your leaders and we're going to have maybe within the next two, three weeks or so. I know, I know how you feel, <clears throat> but I know what it is. <laughs> um, if we get into that now, you alone, I may have to spend more time with you than everybody. Okay, so here's the game. 
Um, I will speak with your leaders. I'm sure you are all on the platform. If not, get on the platform today. Um, we will agree on a Saturday. And on that Saturday, we are not coming for a game. We are not coming for any story. We are coming here for serious moments of prayer. And we're going to really tap into things that have to do with our lives, our marriage, and our destinies. Is that okay with us? Sorry, is, are we all together on board? How many of us believe that it has gotten to a point where our matter requires more than just teaching and prayer? It requires, I mean, teachings, it requires prayer. All right. So what we're going to do is, I'm, I'm not sure in my mind what the Saturdays look like, but I will discuss with Johnny and Pastor, Pasanta. They will send you a message. And on that day, we're going to come here, not 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. The idea is that we're going to come here fasting. We will break, we will round up at 12. So from 9 until 12, I'm going to be on my feet here ministering to you. Are we in agreement? Yes, and you're going to pull in all your friends. Am I correct? Yes. Tell them this one, we are going to pray. Not only for your marriage, for your children, that some of you are watching me. You are not even married, but the devil has started telling you, you will not carry children. There are some of you listening to me right now. You should have been married. Mysterious things happening. Some of you, strange occurrence, things you can't explain. Look at what she's telling us. Imagine a beautiful girl. Imagine a guy will just come, will not stay a day, will not stay a week, will not stay more than a month. Does that look normal? So it's not normal. So the first thing, ma'am, is that that is not normal. Is that okay? And thank God, how long are you in Nigeria for? Are you around for a while? You reside here now? Oh, sorry. So we're going to take it up with prayer. We're going to take. Uh, uh, do you worship here? Okay, so fine. Um, hook up with Pastor Anta. He will arrange for the two of you to see me. So we're going to start even before the next meeting. Is that okay? So we're going to spend time to pray with you. God bless you. That's all right. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, church. My question is, how do you deal with a partner that has consistent mood swings? Not consistent. Often, they have mood swings. And when they have mood swings, they stay away from conversations with you like weeks, months and then you yourself you are a con <laughs> I'm hearing you and you yourself you are a conversationalist you are a conversationalist yes. Yes. conversationist huh? yes, conversationalist and you are in relationship with a guy who whenever I, there's a problem he goes a guy has mood swing when he's not having period. He's not having menstrual period. Okay. <laughs> Don't mind me. So you are with this guy who has mood swing, right? Yes. And his conflict resolution style is avoidance. That's what we're just saying. Yes, sir. But it's an extreme avoidance. It's an extreme avoidance. Um, so he avoids you one week, one month, and all of that. Yes, weeks. That, that's what you're going to be seeing. That's the way your marriage will look like. So you're just having a sneak preview of coming attraction. That's, that's the way your marriage will look like. So if that's the kind of marriage you want, that's okay. But the only thing it will do is that it will frustrate you. Yes. You want to talk to someone who is not available for talk. Yes. Because you can't correct him. He has to see a need to change. He has to seek change. And until he's changed, this is what your marriage will look like. It will even be worse in your marriage because he will lock up himself in his room. The more money he has, if you frustrate him, you want to talk, you want to talk, he will leave the house, go to the hotel. So the, you actually have seen what your marriage will look like. So you have to decide if you like that kind of marriage, if you want it, that's okay. Okay, sir. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not a big problem. It's just If you are the type that can survive in an environment where the man is not talking to me, just ask God for grace. <laughs> uh -uh. 
She said no. It's very frustrating. It's you frustrating. You want to talk to someone. The person cannot be available to talk to you. It does not. When you call him, you rather text you. I mean, it's. You don't like it. It's I frustrating. Don't. I don't. I thought you wanted because I wanted to pray for grace. I wanted to ask God to give you grace so you can endure that kind of stuff. It, it, it's it's frustrating. For those of us who like to talk, yes. it's dangerous to be in a marriage with someone who doesn't want to talk. And the danger with that man is that very soon you're going to find somebody to talk to and it might turn out to be somebody outside your marriage. And that conversation with that person is what is going to lead to adultery. Not because you're a bad woman, not because you're an adulteress. It is conversation you weren't looking for and that's what will lead to problem. It was conversation Eve was looking for that led her to the serpent. Thank you, sir. All right, you know what to do now. Yes. I didn't tell you anything, no. <laughs> my hands are clean I promised I was going to pray for grace you said no praise God yeah yeah yeah, yeah man let it not be as if like it's only the women that have I was I was worried yeah sir so I don't know and I want take the to, mic off yeah I want to I want to know for a young guy like me is this bad for me to like ask for a ready met lady like if I would like to want to go into it I have my reasons yes I have my reasons like like is this a bad thing for me to ask for a ready met lady why I'm asking this question is most of the ladies like for a sing like for a single guy like me that is striving like putting on more hustles to like make things like make life okay like better for me like looking into the future and when i approach a lady there seems to be like ah, what do you what do you have you don't have anything so is this bad for me to also ask for a ready-made lady so i really want to know what do you mean by ready-made like someone that is already doing well like a woman that have money yeah the money yes sir Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, because it bothers me a lot. Like, it bothers you. Yeah, because most of the times, like the young girls, they don't see us guys that we do legit hustling, like legit someone that is legit in what he's doing. And it baffles me, like the other guys that you know take keep off, the microphone. Yeah, the other guys that do the normal thing take most of the pretty girls from us and. He, me the bad guys take yeah, the pretty girls. They, yeah, because then they have their ways. So me now that I like, I you want are to doing a legit like business. A legit business. Like, like I want can you to marry make, a girl that is doing well too in life. Like, is it possible to like for me to look for someone that is already, okay for you to look yes, for? Yes, okay. also. Then, yes, because most of the ladies when you, they're, they're also uh, looking like around looking, for. Yeah, yeah. For ready, so you two, you just let me. Can I look? Is well, can I look? Yeah, yeah. I, I right. want to go, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. But, but it's, it's a game of look. They, they look you to the look. Why? Yes, I want to know. I don't know what this is. But this one is, I really like, I really, it's like a body. Like, like something that I've Put been the mic. battling. Yeah. It's like something that I've been battling with it. So I, I'm 29 now. I'm 29. So, like, I find it difficult to get into a relationship. Why? Because. No matter how pretty a girl is, once we get into maybe, I just look at her. She's no matter how big. So I, I really okay. need to heal on it. Like no matter how beautiful the girl is, you lose eventually. You just lose. Like once we get into intimacy, she doesn't look attractive to you anymore. No matter how the girl is. Yeah. So I really want to know. The so, so I'm going to be very honest. We're going to be frank with you. Does that always happen when you just start talking or does it, does it happen when you have sex with after you have sex with you, you that's when it happens? Yes. Alright, so so the secret is don't have it with them. Don't have sex with them. Okay. The other matters are for public conversation. But but I'm going to give you an idea so that you understand um, the perspective of men. So I get into a relationship with you. 
and the bottom line is that if for any reason I have sex with you, I no longer have attraction for you. It's a common thing. It's an hunter's thing. So ladies, you are learning that firsthand. Nobody pursues, pursues what he has conquered. So, and as a guy, if you don't want that to happen to you, don't allow yourself to get into a situation where there's sexual compromise before you get married. So you have to have a, a relationship with God. Is that okay, Pastor Anta, I'm going to hand him over to you. So Pastor Anta is going to help me disciple you. Is that okay? He has done very well in marriage. He's a lawyer. He's married to a doctor. So he, he married a correct woman. So he will mentor you on how to build the kind of confidence he had as a young lawyer to go and propose to a doctor. So his, his wife is a serious doctor. So God, they get money, you can look at his dressing. They are correct. You understand? So that's the best thing I can do for you. I want to hand you over to him. He will disciple you. You too will end up with a correct marriage. I get plenty of girls for this church. Good girls, where they, they do well. You are 29. I just mentioned. So I get 126, where they make $5,000. Correct girl. But I'm not going to show you the girl until you become okay. <laughs> when you are okay, Dr. Pasanta will tell me that you are okay. Then I'll announce you, Pasanta, show him that girl. Then I'll show you three other ones like that. Then you will now make your choice. So, eh? You pray and God will say, okay, now that one. And if not be any of them, God will show you the correct one. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But all of that joke by the side. Let's now come to the key issue here. And um, is it right for you to look for a woman that is ready-made? Let me see. What do you do for a living? Yeah, I run a business. I run like a restaurant. For my own. You run a restaurant. I run a business. What kind of restaurant? What do you sell in your restaurant? Like Any kind of food? Yes. You do all of that as a man. Yeah. Can we please celebrate this? <laughs> Sir, you should be proud of yourself. What you don't know is what you have. With what you have, sir, you can marry any woman on earth. Any. Which woman doesn't like food? Which woman will now know that the man she married can tell her sleep, I will cook for you? What you don't know is that what God gave you is what most of the women who are very rich, they are looking for men. They are looking for men who can assist them domestically. I said, sweetheart, don't worry about it. Go, go off. You just came back from work. Go and sleep. I prepared your meal. Imagine she's waking up and she's having breakfast on the bed. You, you hear them now, ba? You don't know anything God give you. So he will train you to give value to yourself. And if you have not gone to study as a chef, you will now go, we will arrange also, you must go to school and become a chef. There's one of our guys here in the choir. I don't know if he's around here today. Chidi. Where's Chidi? He has gone. Chidi is in the choir. One of us, one of my men, interacted with him and got to discover that he wants to become a chef. Fine guy. He likes to sing. But he wants to also become a chef. So we say, okay, where does he want to go to? He chose the best place where they train chefs in Abuja. It's in millions, about two million or so, thereabout. So he's done already. And I think he came out one of the best or so. So he's done. So trust me now, many girls, God lead, the God no lead, they go lead themselves there now. <laughs> so there are things that capture women than uh, I would spoil you. There's, there's a way to spoil women than just telling them I have money. So being a chef is one of the powerful things women are looking for. So you are a highly priced commodity. You just need to package yourself together, which Minister Anta will help you to do. Is that okay? Um, so what I would say to you as a man, can you go around looking for a ready-made woman? I would say to you, first of all, pray that God will bring you the right woman. A woman may have money, but she may not like, may not be interested in committing herself to you. 
the first thing you want is a woman God wants for you. And the second thing is to make sure that you get to discover that that woman is going to be excited about your passion. So marry a woman that loves what you love. Marry a woman that loves you for who you are. If it turns out to be a wealthy woman, fine and good. And by the way, something tells me that you're going to marry a very rich woman. Hey, wait a minute. She may not be rich at the time you meet her. She may likely become rich. The one you are marrying now because she has a good job, what if she loses the job? Do you understand? What if she becomes sick? All right? So just marry the person. Just tell God, God, I surrender to you. I know you know what is good for me. And trust me, God will not let you down. Is that okay? So are you free to go around looking for ready-made people? You are actually free. But it comes with a lot of danger. Because you can find a ready-made woman today who everything that makes her ready-made today will be lost tomorrow. But if you meet a woman that God leads you to, it can't, God knows the desire of your heart. Eh? God knows what you are looking for. And God will grant you the desire of his heart. But let it be God leading you. Is that okay? Love you so much. You. Are you the one that asked me the question? <laughs> yes. And I was actually going to ask for you so that we can finish our unfinished business. You are... You are huh? You invited her. Oh, you, you have created, you've created ripples on the internet. Uh, me and you, we have created, we are now celebrities. Uh, so I wanted us to actually take, number one, I wanted to be very sure that the question you asked, did you get your answer? Yes, I did. Good. Uh, yes, I they didn't get so I want us to talk about what the audience wants. Okay. Is that okay? That's okay? All right, go ahead. Let me hear you. Okay. First is to start with your own side of the question if you got an answer. So, okay. we are doing a rejoinder. Okay, my question was... You're looking at the camera. <laughs> I don't want to try again. No, don't worry about it. It's a good one. You've changed a lot of people's lives. Is that okay? Yes, That's an amazing person. Go ahead. Okay, my question was why um, church guys are not bold enough to yeah. ask church ladies out. Yes. But the other guys out there, they are so bold because of the stuff they smoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. So, the whole thing online, a lot of people are saying that the questions were not answered. And I, I got a lot of comebacks. I got a lot of people. My that is my phone. If it's oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, okay. The question now is: They said the the answers you gave the, that is not corresponding to the question I asked. That the church guys were not taught enough from the answer that. How they can approach. I think they want to learn how to approach the church ladies. And some are saying that church ladies are too rude. They are too, their standards are too high. When they approach them, they just give you this kind of attitude. And you know men, they have pride. And ego. So when you give them this kind of attitude, they just, it will just start, they'll just be like, okay, all of them are the same. Like if you come to TCC, see beautiful girls. If you don't have self-confidence, you won't be able to approach any girl. So you need to build your confidence as a man. And some of our sisters, honestly, they, they, their attitude are, are really bad. They are very rude. So that's... <laughs> okay. okay. That's it, sir. Okay. And um, the second question is, oh, how do ladies handle people? Because from the comment section... I got a lot of guys telling me that me, I'll be there, I'll be doing church. Somebody even called me Maria Maka on TikTok. That I'll be doing church, church, and we'll get old. And we'll not get anybody to get married to us because we are following what our pastors are saying. That we should approach guys. That if, if the church guys are not, the, the, the comment was, if the church guys are not coming to you, why can't you go to them? And like I said the other day, I am not called to be an evangelist to be dragging men. To church. Okay. So I can't ask a man out because the Bible says, He that findeth a wife finds a good thing, not the other way. It's not she that findeth a husband. And the Bible still says that none shall lack her mates. He didn't say he. That means the ladies should wait for the guys to approach them. And in your teachings, you made mention of when you feel led, maybe you see a guy you like, you should approach the guy. I don't really 
understand because a lot of guys tend to take advantage of ladies when they ask them out. A guy might not like you. A guy might not like you because you have the boldness to come and meet him. He will just play along. And along the line, after using you, he will still leave because men are hunters. They go for what they want, not the other way around. So that's the question, sir. Oh, thank you so much. So we need to deal, we need to, so today now, we are not just here to answer your question. So you said you have received your own answer, right? Yes, sir. Fantastic. So your own question has been answered, but through you now, a lot of people out there, and funny enough, you know what? Most of the people that were asking, that were making the comments, don't let that bother you. Some of the people that are making the comments are people that are not church people. Two, they were not here to hear the full yes. teaching. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. So, but let's address the issue. Church brothers, why is it that church brothers are not confident to approach ladies? The first thing we want to say about church brothers, like we said before, is that church brothers by virtue of the fact that some of them started Christian life very early. Many of them were not trained to approach women. It was not part. On the contrary, when we were growing up, when church brothers, most of the young people who gave their lives to Christ, the first thing church, church teaches them is how to avoid ladies. So let's, uh, it's important you understand how church works. Otherwise, an unbeliever, somebody who is not a Christian, who doesn't come to church, who doesn't grow up, who didn't grow up in church, will not understand what happens in church. So the first thing we teach in church in order for brothers to live clean lives is to avoid interaction with the opposite sex. Is that okay? But thanks be to God for the Pentecostal churches of today that are beginning to encourage brothers to interact. Look at what is going on here in every of our meetings. We encourage you to try to interact with the opposite sex. So number one, most brothers who grew up in church find it difficult to interact with the opposite sex. But then, when it comes to interaction, we are saying that brothers must learn to be bold as we have been teaching you here. We have said any brother can approach any sister. Any man can approach any woman. If you have a clear vision, you know where you're going to, you know what you have, like we've always taught you here, there is no woman you cannot approach. We've said that over and over here. And you should be bold enough to do that. You need to have confidence in yourself. There's no reason why a boy outside the world, somebody who is not a Christian, somebody who by virtue of the fact that, um, you know, he doesn't have respect for women. There's no reason why he should be bolder than a Christian who has Christ on the inside. Except for the fact that the kind of teachings we've had has made many brothers not to be able to express themselves. We are now saying, brothers should be bold enough once you see someone that you believe god is leading you to you should have the boldness to be able to walk up to the person based on the structure of your church several churches have a modality they have a process by which such expressions are made known and the reason why churches have the structures in place is so that we don't have so one brother going to so many ladies at the same time in order to protect everybody in the church, some churches have structures by which a brother can express his desire. So we're saying, brother should be bold enough to be able to go to any lady of your choice as the Lord leads you, as you feel or deem fit, be able to walk up to her first, expressing your admiration, your concerns, your appreciation, affirmations, and your interest in the person. Over time, friendship can begin and then it can lead to whatever else it can lead to. All of these things must be done as Christians in such a way that it honors the name of Christ. It's critical to know that ultimately Christ must be honored in everything. We are not unbelievers. We can't do it as unbelievers do it. We are not uh, people out there, sinners out there. We are children of God and we have a way, a kingdom way by which these things should be done. As a Christian, you should be bold enough as a brother, as a sister. We have taught you here, one of the things that you may have learned from us is that, please, ma'am, if you read Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says it was the Lord that brought the woman to the man. It was not the man that went to the woman. So I have this challenge whereby we try to apply uh, principles that we think are scriptural, but they are not scriptural. Genesis chapter 2, between Adam and Eve, who went to each other? 
It was Eve that was brought to Adam. He woke up to find her in his place, but he made the decision. Do you understand that? In the case of Rebecca, she was brought to Isaac. Do you understand that? In the case of Ruth, the Bible made us understand also concerning Ruth, that it was Ruth that went to Boaz. So you have cases like that in scripture whereby the women made the first move. The women were the ones who met the man. We are now saying that it can go both ways. If the man is the first to recognize that this is a woman I want to marry, like we said today, you don't allow such an, a God-created opportunity to pass by when you have the right time, the right person, the right direction. You don't let it pass by because you're saying, I don't want to talk to her. I'm waiting for her to come to me. I don't want to talk to him. I'm waiting for him to come to me. Once God has given you the lead, leadings to do that, take the first step, if for anything, to become friends. Some, most of the guys... If you go to them, they will take advantage of it. They will not turn you down because they find you attractive. So here's what I want to say. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Um, if you feel very strong, we're saying that it's not that you just feel like going to a guy. You feel that God is impressing it in your spirit that this is a guy. Is that okay? Please, ma'am. The first thing to do is not necessarily go and say, okay, look, I want you to marry me. The first thing to do is to become friends all right as you begin to interact closely you will begin to know if what you are sensing about him is similar to what he's sensing about you and where you sense his maturity level you can tell him sorry i was praying and this is what i heard about you is that okay there's nothing wrong letting him know if he feels differently he will tell you but like i said you begin first on the ground of friendship to the extent to which you feel is matured enough to hear what next you have to say, you can tell him. You understand that? That was a conversation between Ruth and Boaz. Do you understand? So don't allow the fact that you may be rejected make you not even make the take the necessary step. There are guys who take advantage of women, but all guys don't take advantage of women. There are women who do the same. So you can't say because of some bad people, you're not going to do what you need to do. Is that okay? So the first thing we're establishing here is that the brothers and the sisters, everybody should have the liberty to be able to walk up to the other person if you feel so. But I am saying that if you are in a church, make sure you have a recourse to the structure of that church. Make sure you get to interact with the leadership or the person whosoever is in, in position to guide or midwife the process but if you don't have such structure in your church whereby you can just go meet the person that's okay there are churches where it's open for all just go talk to anybody you want to talk to nobody holds you accountable in some other cases in some churches they will guide they'll go to the guy first of all even help you to do some initial check to know whether it is right for you to go or not so that you don't even go and endanger yourself so we're saying that the brothers have the right to talk to the sisters. The sisters have the right to talk within the ambit of the structures or whatever is placed in that particular church. And the way the church does it is not the way the world does it. So a child, somebody who is not a Christian, who is not a Christian, uh, because he is not a Christian, he can approach a woman anyhow he wants. Yes. So we are not going to compromise church standard because of that. We are saying a brother has a boldness, but the way a brother will approach a lady is not the way an unbeliever who is not a Christian will approach a woman. Okay. The purposes are not also the same. When a Christian brother is approaching a sister, there is a specific purpose in view. When an unbelieving boy is approaching a lady, he has his own ulterior motive in view. So we are saying all brothers can be bold enough to approach the ladies and all ladies also can approach the brothers as God leads. Does that answer all the questions? All right, so tell all our online friends that we're sending the video to do a rejoinder. Eh? We're sending part two to all of them. All right, thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. God bless you, My name is Blessing Samuel. So my I my just, name? Yes, sir. You're my father. So I just have um, one question to ask. Yeah. Uh, soon I'm going to be 28. So you don't look here. Yeah, I know. So, um, I made a vow to God 
um, which I'm not apologizing to anyone about it. Yes. That no sex in marriage. That's great. Can we put our so, hands together for that? Yeah. Um, since 20, I've been single since 24. So since 24, um, any guys that any guy that comes my way wants to have sex. sex so yeah. once I said no, they cut the old thing off. So last month I was in the office and uh, someone I regard as my spiritual mother sent a message to me on WhatsApp that um, she got a revelation that there is someone that likes me, but. Um, the person is scared to approach me, maybe because I'm too serious, because people said I'm too serious. I don't know. I, I, you know, I can't see myself when I'm walking. So, I don't know, because each time I'm coming back from office, I'm always tired because I work as a customer service representative with DSTV. So, I'm always tired when I'm coming back from work. So, last year, there's this guy that always joke every evening when I'm coming back from work, when I'm always taking a walk as well. There's this aura of calmness. So each time I see him, my heart always skip. I've, and I'm, I'm even scared to, I'm even scared to, to, to greet. And uh, my sisters are saying, go to him, go to him. I just feel like as a fire-branded sister. I cannot go to this guy and just say, so I, like since last year, since last year, so this year, I don't know, in your teaching, number mm -hmm. five, mm -hmm. you said we should make use of this opportunity. So the next time I see him, because he always looks into my eyes. So the next time I see him, Papa, should I just, should I create this atmosphere of, you know, or should I just go to him and not lustfully, just talk to him and since you said we should test our spirits, let me just test this one and see. What do you think about it? DSTV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, already the person is looking in your direction, right? Hi, good morning. How are you, sir? I noticed you go out jogging. I, I love your consistency. Let me start with that one. You start first by just simply admiring what you see. Okay. Good morning. How are you, sir? Good, good to see you. I'm always seeing you here, sir. You're the one I always see. That's almost like a rhetorical question. He's the one you always see. But then you say, hello, sir. You're the one I always see, always jogging. What is it about jogging that you love so much? Your consistency amazes me. Amazes me. And I think someone like you inspires me to continue. All right? And the statement may just be a... I oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, and sorry, and what's the name, sir? I, I'm, I'm Martha. Huh? Okay. And then, uh, what you do? Is that okay? Amazing. Sorry. Uh, have you been to the Transforming Church before? No. Uh, where, where do you worship? Oh, no. I go to San Church. So that already will show you. Oh, wow. Amazing. You look like a pastor. That's how to begin to tap into spiritual issues. You understand that? See, just two minutes I've asked the most important questions. Imp the most important question that make me to say continue or not continue. We've decided within two minutes. Hey, I'm almost meeting you here. What is it about this worker that you love so much? By the way, I love your consistency. My name is Martha. How are you doing? There's one thing most men can't stand. A woman that looks at them boldly and says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boldness. You understand that? I'm good to see you. My name is Martha. And I love the fact that you've been so consistent. In fact, I think you inspire me to be coming out every time here. And, and by the way, what you do, no, I'm into this. Okay, well, I'm a DSCV customer service. So in case you have any challenge with DSCV, you can always call me. Is that okay? That you can leave that one till the end. That DSTV part, you leave it till the end. That one is the golden strategy. When you start, what do you do for a living? Uh, don't ask him, do you go to church? Just, and you look like someone that, are, have you been to TCC before? You say, no. Where is that? The transforming church. Okay, no, okay. That's, where do you worship? That's the question you want to ask. Oh, I worship as a church. Oh, that. You look like a pastor. No, 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 I'm not a pastor. Oh, really? So what do you do in church? Now I'm just a worker. Uh -huh. What you hear is a worker. That's, we can lower our guard. Mm -hmm. 
And then the next one, like, okay, well, I work with DSTV. I'm a customer service. So in case you have any DSTV problem, I'm going to give you my number so they can always feel free to call me. Because something is doing something inside you every time you see him, Abby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give me feedback, testimony later. But, but don't forget, sweetheart, do your finger like this. And this is telling me, Reverend Sam, no matter what we talk about, we are not losing the vow you have. All right. Good afternoon, sir. And hey. Good afternoon, church. I love this one. Yeah. All right, so um, first off, my name is Victor Joseph, and then um, this is my first time in Abuja and my first time in TCC. So, um, so you are um, home. Thank you, sir. Um, I've been hearing a lot about some um, Reverend Samoye from Lagos, where I was, I am based or was based, and then it's an honor to finally, you know, see you. Amen. Thank you, sir. So I like the way you started the message this morning from the statistics and the types of singles and you know it touched me when you were asking are you voluntary or you know <laughs> let me not go there but i know one thing for sure i am in between voluntary permanent and involuntary permanent <laughs> until now until the lockdown when the covid came and of course it did the thing but it kind of touched me the, um, especially because it revealed a lot of things and then it had to like make me start changing my concept of marriage because I vowed I was never going to get married. But now, there are still some fears that I want to raise, okay. which you kind of addressed, which is parental consent. And then you say we should seek why and then go to there. Yeah. But now, what happens to some of us, I want to use us now, yeah. who grew up in homes or in settings where we constantly hear phrases like, you are too stubborn, that is why I, 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 I labored for you for one week, you are too stubborn, that is why... Okay, let me not go into details. But then, daddy would always tell you, I'm not your father, go out there and look for your father. Sorry about and then that. mother would always say, ask. So, now, the, the last fear I have with marriage is parental consent. No matter the choice I make, I feel they would just not accept her and the family. Not because of her, or because of any cultural... But because... There's this acrimony from, you know, that I, so I don't know how to deal with. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So I, 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 I don't know how to, how to deal with, and I, 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 in my first time in Abuja because I've just been around for like three months because I literally just had to make that bold step to just leave the house and try to find an environment where I can, you know, find myself and all. So that's why I'm, I'm, how do I do it? We do it, still with that. You are a good man. You have a great future. Thank you, sir. And I see that you're going to be a great father. Okay. okay. Talk to me. What do you want to say? I, 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 I don't know. But then it's as... After the lockdown, the, the whole idea changed from marriage to... Okay, I'll be comfortable with just being a father. You know, not marriage. Uh -huh, not marriage kind of you're, father. You're going to be... So... You're going to be a great father. And um, God is going to bless you with a woman that's going to make you rediscover motherhood and love. God is going to bless you with a woman with enormous capacity to love. And the first thing that the Lord said I should tell you is... Um, take your eyes away from your father. Turn your eyes to the father. The reason you're feeling this wounded is because your eyes are on your father. 
but your father is not the father. If you really want to understand fatherhood, turn to the father. Turn to Abba, father. The father of all spirits. He never judges you. He never condemns you. He loves you unconditionally. He cares about you. He knows the plans he has for you. He sent you here for a purpose. Your meeting is not by accident. The father arranged it. The home you are going to have, the father arranged. This is the beginning of your healing process. You're a good man. A good man with a great heart. Can I, can I say something? Yes. Okay, so, um, um, first of all, I want to say that I've always had this prejudice against the opposite sex. Like, let me use the prejudice anyways, because it's like an intense hatred. Yes. But like, well now, I want to say that since the lockdown, um, I've tried to get into one or two relationships and the whole trajectory, the whole thing, I'm just not comfortable with it. Right? So you are trying to get into a relationship where you are a wounded man. Your first focus is not relationship, it's healing. You've been wounded. Marriage has been grossly misrepresented before you. Relationship has been completely destroyed before you. You didn't get it from daddy. So you don't even want to be a father. Because you don't even know what a father looks like from the kind of father you had. True. You don't understand affection because you didn't get it from a mother. So the two sources of healthy development you didn't get anything from that so we have to start afresh and i'm glad you've come to abuja to start afresh what i will encourage you to do is to devote the next few months to a healing process not relationship and you you're going to be happily married you're going to get a good relationship listen you see all the girls in this church none of them ever hurt you all the women you are meeting here none of them ever did you wrong it is dangerous for you to use one experience with your mother to define womanhood it's 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 actually not just mother it's not just mother. it's not just my mom other women right um um, 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 I, I, was, I was a victim of, of um, um, yeah, yes. yes. That's okay. Be bold enough about that. You were setting somebody free by doing that. Again, even that experience, I'm sorry about that. Even that experience of being violated. Huh? God bless you, sir. Even that experience of being violated by a woman doesn't in any way represent womanhood. The woman you met, the woman who did that to you, represents a weak species, a dysfunctional species of women. Women are loving, women are protective, women are caring. We, we've dealt with that a lot. We've seen men who were raped, violated, and all of that. We've seen that. I have one of them who said, I would never marry again in my life. He's the father of two kids now. So proud of his children. So loving to his wife in the United Kingdom. It hurts me to know that you were wounded very early in your life. But I want you to know that there is a God who heals the brokenhearted. 
there are women out here who want to love you. Who want to, there's a woman out there that God has created. God has prepared her to come into your life and show you love. But you can't receive her love until you are healed of what these other women did to you. That's why any woman that comes to love you, you're not going to value it because you are still wounded, you are hurting. And you're going to be looking at every woman through the lenses of the women who have hurt you. Here's what I want to say to you. These ones are not those ones. Keep that in mind. The women God is bringing your way are not the ones you met before. It takes a weak woman to take the innocence of a young man like you. She doesn't represent womanhood. No. You need to listen to Bishop George Bloomer. Bishop George Bloomer was called by a woman at the age of nine. Bishop George Bloomer. The woman called him in the neighborhood. Can you go buy me things? And he said, okay, ma'am, let him go. He went and he came back. And she gave him money to appreciate him. And lured him into having sex with her. She violated him at a young age. And kept him sleeping with her from age 9 to 16. It destroyed the way he looked at life. Because from that moment, the only persons George Bloomer wants to sleep with are older women. Because she introduced sex and reward. As he sleeps with her, she rewards him. So in his mind, older women are more rewarding. She destroyed him. It was so bad that after Bishop George Bloomer became married, became born again, and was a bishop, he was still having issues with sleeping with older women. Until he came for a meeting like this with Bishop Jakes, where God set him free. And he went out to manpower global manpower conference and he shared his story not hiding anything because anything you are ashamed to talk about you have not been free from your freedom begins today by just talking about it your freedom begins there are so many men out there who have been raped who have been molested violated and all of that you are a strong man to be able to talk about it your freedom is here Then I want to let you know that we love you, come. We love you. And pastor, come close with him. We're going to be here with you. And I believe God brought you into Abuja so that the porter can make you back together again, bring you back together. I believe God wants to heal you. And God wants to prepare you for what God has prepared for you. You're going to bring healing to many in this generation. The devil will have to pay for what he did. You're not the only one going through the things you've gone through. There are so many mutilated and violated men. A book is going to come out of your story. It's a unique ministry God has given to you. A unique assignment. And it's cutting across church. It's going to be in the secular and the church space. You're going to bring healing and hope to many. So get rid of the fear of being married. For now, get healed. And after you get healed, can I shock you? The next set of people God is going to send you back to is your parents. You're still going to go back to them. Not the boy that they crushed. The man that God has healed. You are going home and you're going to buy gifts for them from Abuja. As soon as you enter home, dad, I brought this for you. Mom, I brought this for you. Do you understand that? Not the crushed boy, the healed man. And after we're done with them, we are here with you. He's going to keep in touch with you. And I'm available. After we're done, we now look at what do you want to do? What's your profession? What did you study? Um, I, I, I dropped out of school. You so, dropped out? Yes. So, um, you but have right, to go. You right have to now, go back to school. But right now, I I write. And I, I You're have, a writer. Yes. You have to go back to school. What school were you attending before? Um, for that polytechnic, either. No, you are more yes. than a polytechnic person. Is that okay? 
why don't you look at maybe working and schooling? So would you want to do an open university? Or you want to attend a... Okay, I will leave that to two of you. Whatever you decide, by the grace of God, we will see how we can assist you to go to school. Is that okay? And Pastor Sunday is there is our executive pastor. All right. He is going to assess you and all of that. And I'm sure somebody somewhere will find you as a useful writer. If that's what you can start with, to start earning money. Okay. And then we'll figure out whether you want to do an open university whilst you are, you are working, you are making money, and you're also schooling at the same time. If that is the approach, or if you want to go straight to school, we'll figure out maybe one of the University of Abuja here or the closest university. You go to one of the schools, all right? We, by the grace of God, will finance your school. Is that okay? Thank you, sir. We, we don't make empty promise here. We have so many we've sent to school. So you are going back to school. Go get your certificate ready. If you want to start the Open University, the registrar for Open University is one of us here. I will call her and she will enroll you immediately. Thank you, sir. And if you are here and you want to provide him with a job, maybe like assistant clerical job, secretarial job, someone that can help you to just do basic work. If you have something you want him to do, please let us know. Otherwise, we'll figure out what to create for him to do so that um, he can begin his own life. Uh, this is a great man going somewhere to happen. Um, we love you. Thank you, sir. God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much. My name is Bulani Taini Martino Kafo. I'm in South Africa in Pretoria. I want to share the testimony and to thank God about the testimony that I'm going to share today. I joined the PPH last year, late in June. And I just want to share what happened today when we were praying, when Pastor Sam was talking about the veil being removed, the veil being destroyed. I, I remember exactly the words of Pastor Sam when he was praying about the veil for most of us who have been covered with veil for so many years. I, for one, I've been covered with that veil maybe for for many many years because i remember i went to the university i did my 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 ba and then after that i did my honors in organization and management but i couldn't remember anything i don't know anything that i've studied at the university level even when i started working i couldn't remember anything i will study different courses different trainings i will just try to read and check what i'm reading it was difficult for me to concentrate but it, 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 yesterday after pastor sam pay about this i didn't even feel anything when pastor sam was praying i was just praying together with him yeah. And then I went out to the bank. When I went to the bank, it was a different experience that I'm having. People were just welcoming me, being nice to me, laughing at me. And I could just feel or know that there's something that happened because even my mind, when I tried to, when I was studying, I was doing a training, I was starting to train, to, to, to read and to study. I could easily see the, the things now that I didn't see for the past 50 years. I didn't see anything, but yesterday, I started seeing things as it is. I just even realizing after coming to myself, oh no man, it means the veil has also been removed from me because I couldn't feel anything during the prayer. It was only when I was reading and studying my materials when I realized that now I can see things, I get in clearer, I understand things very, very easy. The things that I've been struggling, that I've been trying and struggling to understand for a very, very long time. And I went to the petrol station to pop up the garage. The owner there was very nice. The people who were working there were very nice asking me how what can we do for you ma'am how are you today have you and i thank god really how really i now experience how it is when we have been praying for something and you finally see the results without feeling anything and i want to thank god and i want to thank pastor sam and the whole church mama mary oh yeah we thank you very much for the commitment what you are doing to so many countries and i want to thank god for that i'm very very grateful thank you very much Monday to Friday, I want to personally invite you to join thousands every morning, 5.50 a.m. West African time, in the presence of the Lord for a moment of revival, healing, breakthroughs, and turnarounds. The testimonies we've been receiving from over 110 countries is a testament to what God can do. 
one of the things that I want to tell you is that you are the next on God's schedule for a mind-blowing miracle we pray here we prevail and we prosper I'd like you to join us every day 5.50 a.m. West Africa time 11.50 Central Standard Time in the United States 12.50 a.m. past midnight in the Eastern Standard Time in the United States be my guest I look forward to having you there thank you for watching we hope you were blessed and richly transformed by this sermon join us on site and online in any of our centers globally as displayed on the screen when we pray the our God who heals us yeah. when we pray the our God to answer yeah. when we pray we prevail we prosper Follow us on all social media handles as shown on the screen. Also, don't forget to join Prophetic Prayer Hour with Rev. Sam Oye, weekdays Monday to Friday by 5.50 a.m. West African Time. Join on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram at Rev. Sam Oye. Please invite your friends and family members, for with our God, all things are possible. For more inquiries, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org. We celebrate you. I'm intoxicated by the power in that name. That name is more powerful than neutron bomb, more powerful than chemotherapy. That name is more powerful than radiotherapy. I've seen the name work. This is the Transforming Church International. One church making global impact.